What are the odds? What are those odds? <laughs> I think there's only one banana there. So. Oh, there might. No, well, if his name is in there three times, then. Uh, oh, it's not. not. It's not. It's not. <laughs> I, 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 I thought of it after. Oh, okay. I'm bringing a chair. Oh, I should bring a chair for my friend, too. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that story after all. I know. It's just a version of, um, did I tell you the one that I came across in uh, Scary Stories to Tell 3? Uh, maybe it's even in the dark. Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark 3. So he's written three versions of these back in the 80s. Very funny. But uh, one of them goes something like this. Uh, a man was a man was riding the train, and uh, a very nice looking lady came and sat next to him and uh, pulled out a giant book and uh, was reading it and ignoring pretty much everything and you can kind of tell when somebody's really into their book and so finally he got a glance at the title to see you know you you, you know you do when somebody's really into their book you you're always interested too like okay, what is this and it looked like just an anthology of ghost stories. And so when she finally looked up, he was like, what are you reading? You know, and she told him about the ghost stories. And he goes, oh, man, I wish I could see a ghost. She says, you've never seen a ghost? And he goes, no, I've never seen a ghost. Things like that just don't happen to me. And uh, she goes, oh, that's so sad. And uh, he said, yeah, it is. He looked out the window and he looked back. She was gone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's getting there. I think what I'm going to do for the, oh, I'll tell you, I'll read the thing when I get to it. But uh, um, I think uh, I, I get to do Featured Storyteller in October mm -hmm. up in Olympia. And I think I'm going to do that. But I'm going to do it as, uh, as, as me. And I might even say, uh, and she actually told me she would tell one of the stories. Here she is. Ah. And then look around and be like, well, she was here. Did you guys see where she went? Did you <laughs> see my friend? You know, and, or something like that. Just play with it a little bit. Start describing her outfit. Yeah. yeah. So the first thing I'm going to read to you today is a... Um, it's, it's, it's part of my daily journal. And uh, it's just kind of what came up from this. So, I'm telling some spooky stories in October. And Maggie from the Story Guild asked me for a blurb about what I'm doing. I am thinking that through here, now. I am liking the title above for the whole thing. The blurb could go like this. Okay, the title above, I forgot to read that. Uh, the title for the program, I'm thinking, would be, What Are You Afraid Of? Mm. So... And then the blurb is going to go like this. Mitch Nelson wants to scare you. Oddly, he is afraid of scaring people. Over the years, he's mastered putting people at ease about his disability with kindness and humor. Now he's facing that fear by telling a handful of spooky stories. It's so out of his nature to try scaring people that it might actually be funny to watch. Mm. So Maggie said she liked it. I sent her that. So I might work on it some more. I might see if she sent it out already. Yeah. Let's see. There was w one day when I wrote slam poetry types. It wasn't very long. And this is what you get. This was on Saturday. And, uh, yeah. 10 a.m. jam session. I follow along. I'm not ready to try any songs I've come across on my own. It is rewarding and it is fun enough. I am learning and getting better at a lot of things. I'm okay following along for now. It's not like I can have, oh, it's not like I can now have had something prepared so I could write something exciting about a new song that I tried this morning. I've just followed along. Today, I will have always just followed along at jam session this morning. Mm, yeah. That's kind of the, uh, 
in other places they talk about the fact that there's no uh, undo button on life. Mm -hmm. And the, yeah, I, I used to waste a lot of time thinking back and going, oh, I wish I, I wish I, I wish I had tried to, uh, yeah, I could have done that, I could have said this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 11 p.m., watching. I sit in the dark watching another movie, this is the same day, about people making connections and trying things that scare them. It is enough for my mirror, my mirror neurons. I'm glad I don't have to do any of the scary things I think up to try. I can just keep following along. So that was a mood. That was a mood that day. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, reviewing the day moods are, are often like, but yeah, uh, I don't know, they've been disappointing recently. Let's see, I want to tell a story, if there's time. What story haven't I told? In a while. Oh, this came up the other day, talking about fall. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, many eons ago. Jack Frost was out in the fall doing his thing, flicking the leaves off of the trees and having a good time. And uh, they would turn brown and then he would come along and just flick them up and have, you know, like I could just imagine, I, I could actually imagine doing that. It's like a little fidget board, but a, tr but a whole tree and you just like flick, flick. And uh, so he was having a good time. And then the Frost King came and said, Jack, Jack, stop. I gotta tell you something before you keep going too far. And uh, so it turns out uh, the, the thing he had to be told was this little story. There was a little red bird who uh, was one of the types of birds that would usually fly south for the summer, for the winter, I mean. And uh, she ended up getting chased, I, who knows what happens with little birds, but her little wing got broken and she got stuck and her family had to go and she got scared and she went up to one of the trees, one of the big leafy trees and said, hey, I'm so scared, I'm going to be alone, I'm going to be cold, can you please keep me warm? And the mighty oak said, oh, no, I am way too important for this type of work. I relish the day when you all go to the south, and it's peaceful and quiet in the snow. And so she went to another leafy tree, and the same thing, she got rejected. And finally, it was one of the uh, junipers, just a little juniper that heard and said, hey, come over here, well, I'll, I'll take care of you. And the pine had heard that story as well and said, oh, Goodness, you're such a small tree. Let me stand near you, too. I'll block the wind. And the fir tree came and said, I have many thick needles. You can surely find berries and food in me as well. And uh, those three evergreen trees took care of that bird that winter. And so the king said, as you go flicking, the frost king said, Jack, please leave the evergreens alone. And so he always does every winter. That was so wholesome. <laughs> I love that so much. Thank you. I believe I found that when I was looking for Danish folk tales really? at one point because my family speaks. There's two. I can't mix them up because the one won't go to down one. I can't even get it out now. <laughs> you both have to do it together. Here, I'll take that one. So that leaves felony.